Are you looking for a way out of pain? Dealing with chronic pain, sore bits in your body? Uh, well, if you're anything like me, uh, that is could could well be an issue for you. And that is what we're going to talk about today on, on the show. This is episode 111, that nice um, nice sort of, I don't know if it's a round number, but 111 is a nice number uh, episode um, of the Let's Talk Thyroid podcast. I'm your host, Annabelle Bateman, and today I'm talking about this way out of pain, how to get out of chronic pain with um, Alison Salmon. She is fabulous. You're going to love her. Lots of energy, very, I mean, I could have kept talking to her for a long time. She's a functional nutrition and lifestyle practitioner who works with people to get out of chronic illness and escape all those, you know, weird symptoms that we get um, and to live kind of energized, pain-free, you know, in lots of practical ways. So Alison, you'll hear her story of how she dealt with um, chronic pain for a long time, over 10 years in her 20s, uh, and how her journey of recovery from out of that chronic pain. She's written um, a, an e-book called Detoxing Endocrine Disruptors, um, an essential checklist, and she's a featured author in the Amazon international bestseller, Teach Your Expertise. But um, you know, she's a mum, she's a mum of four, uh, sorry, she's not a mum of four, she's a mum of a four-year-old. <laughs> Um, so, uh, she became a first time mum naturally over 40 and she's really, you know, loves inspiring other women, um, to have healthy pregnancies, uh, even in that slightly older age bracket. So I really, I know you're going to enjoy this conversation. As I said, lots of high energy, lots of, um, great practical information too, that, um, Ali shares about her own journey and the clients that she works with and how to get out of chronic pain. So hope you enjoy it. Welcome, Alison Salmon, to the Let's Talk Thyroid podcast, all the way from LA. Feels very kind of celebrity to have someone from LA on the show. So, <laughs> um, in fact, actually, I was just looking on my Facebook memories. I was in LA four years ago, and we stayed in some really cool places with rooftop pools. And I was like, uh -huh. I felt very celebrity. So, I'm I'm imagining <laughs> you in some glamorous place in LA. Is that is that is that fair? Oh, absolutely. It's all about the glamour. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. I used to work in entertainment. I used to work in television and film, but behind the scenes. And so everybody uh -huh. on camera looks like so fabulous and it's a fabulous life, but it's actually quite grueling to, to make people look <laughs> like that. that. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was funny because in this hotel we were staying in before, like our kids flew over separately. I'd been over for a conference and with my husband and we stayed in this you know, pretty fancy hotel Um and so I was kind of lapping it all up before the kids arrived. Yeah. And, you know, we're talking totally. to the waiter and I said to, I said to my husband, he, he must be trying to get it like this. The, surely we're in this fabulous LA hotel. The waiter's got to be like a struggling actor. And sure enough, <laughs> you, yeah. So what else? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get in. I'm like, yep, okay. We are in LA. We are in LA. <laughs> yep, everybody has a screenplay and everybody's going to an audition. And, yep. <laughs> yeah, that was good. But I, I just felt like I'm here. I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the LA thing. So tell us a little about you, Ali. Um, and, you know, when, when you're not kind of behind the scenes in, um, yeah. you know, in film and television in LA, what are you, what are you doing? Tell us a little about you and your interest in health and thyroid health, and then we'll go from there. Well, that's how it kind of all began was so in another life in New York, I worked in television and film. And uh, it was my dream job. It's what I always wanted to do my entire life. And what was starting to happen, though, I was falling apart. <laughs> I had unexplained chronic pain for over 10 years. And this is in my 20s. I'm working my dream job. And it was my knees, lower back, and butt. So walking was a problem. Stairs being in New York City, it's all up and down, everything up and down mm -hmm. and getting in and out of the subway. Uh, my condo had up and down stairs. Like I couldn't, it was going to the bathroom as a woman going to sit down, like it was really hard to do and sitting. So commuting by bus or train or just sitting, having a conversation like this would be excruciating for me. And, yeah, wow. um, you know, I, I thought of myself as a healthy, active person. And yet I was falling apart. I was doing all the right things. I didn't mm -hmm. realize I was doing so many things wrong. There were so many things that I could have been doing better. And it was this journey to, to fix myself. Like, what is wrong with me? How come everybody else is, is having, living their best lives? And I have a dream job and 
I am miserable because it really is, it wears on you and you just feel awful. I mean, I was fatigued. I, you know, I hurt. I mean, just, I remember I would be sleeping and if, you know, you, you move in your sleep and I, if I bent my knee in my sleep, it felt like it was so swollen. It felt like it was going to break in half. My whole leg was going to break in half. And that's not a good way to live. And I oh. went to, no. <laughs> and you're young. Like I can imagine. I was I mean, young. You, yeah, that's young. I, I was like an old yeah. lady. And I was mm. the kind of person who liked to walk up the escalator. I'm not going to take an escalator. Like I go, I couldn't anymore. Like I'm watching little old lady, actual old ladies passing me by. And I was like, <laughs> I had colleagues who would carry me on their back because our studio had a, had a really steep staircase to get up to the production offices. And he carried me. It was ridiculous. And I was seeing... Mm all of the top orthopedists in in new york and new jersey and i mean top athletes that's who they went to and i did all of the therapies and uh chiropractic and physical therapy i was in traction like all of these things and they couldn't figure out what was wrong and Mm -hmm. it wasn't until one of the top surgeons of course the surgeon in new york city and he said well, I want to do exploratory surgery. And I was like, what? Because my pain was not consistent with the scans. I had a tear in my knee. I had a bulging disc in my back, but it wasn't any, I don't know why they didn't think there was anything connected to that, but it just wasn't consistent. And they wanted to figure out, because I also, I, I passed up on knee surgery. I was like, aren't they just going to cut out the torn part? Mm-hmm. So mm. doesn't most people who have knee surgery have to have knee surgery again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to do that. So I mm. chose the or option, or you can try to strengthen the muscles around the knees, blah blah blah. And so there was just something that didn't sit right with me about exploratory surgery. I didn't want to do it, but I didn't know what was wrong, and I didn't know how to fix it. And so it was just on this journey of going to every single person. Mm, and I guess it was partly yeah. because I did work in television. So, you know, actors will ha- always have their guru, their person. Uh, and I went, okay. yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And I went to all of their people and tried all of the potions. And I finally was introduced to somebody who introduced me to this crazy newfangled concept. I'm, I think you and your listeners may have heard of it. It's new. Nutrition. <laughs> totally wild. No Blew way. My mind. Well, you wouldn't be hearing that from your orthopedic surgeon, would you? <laughs> so. No, I didn't hear it from yep. anybody in ten years. Wow, ten years! So you went on like this for ten years. Nobody asked me about what I ate or what I wasn't eating or mm. anything about that. It was. It, it just wasn't. They looked at me as somebody who was twenty-four, and fit relatively fit because I wasn't overweight therefore I'm healthy and that was the mentality that I subscribed to too I worked out Mm. I went to the gym I eat my Weight Watchers lean cuisines frozen meals you know (laughs) so 24 your body is falling apart (laughs) you finally (laughs) after going to all the top specialists hear about nutrition from was Mm -hmm. it a nutritionist or a naturopath or a functional medicine who was it that told you about Nutrition. None of the above. No, he. Right. I went to him to help strengthen the muscles over my knee. So he did something called muscle reactivation uh, technique. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, but he introduced me because he he asked me about what I was eating. Uh-huh. I didn't think that my. So let me back up. I told you I worked in television, and it's really long hours. It's not the glamorous. It's not as glamorous as you know you'd think. And so you're working really long hours, you're very tired, and most people are drinking copious amounts of coffee, soda, uh-huh. they mm-hmm. smoke cigarettes. I didn't do any of that because I was a healthy mm. person. But you know what I did? I ate sugar. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. I needed to have a pick-me-up. And so sugar was my vehicle, was mm. my energy. And yeah. he talked to me about that. And she kind of was was showing, talking to me about energetics of food. And it was the first like, aha, I had that, oh my God, like what I'm eating or not eating could actually have something to do with how I was feeling. And it just, 
it never made any sense to me because it mm. just was new information. But immediately, immediately that night uh, or the next day, I didn't have orange juice, which was something I drank every day as part of a healthy American diet, bowl of healthy cereal yep. and a glass of orange juice and a multivitamin. And that's a healthy breakfast that I've had my whole life. I don't even like orange juice. I hate it. <laughs> Drinking it. <laughs> Because told it was healthy. You needed the vitamin C. And he's like, why don't you just eat strawberries, eat an orange, eat broccoli? And I was like, what? I don't have to drink orange juice? Okay. And so the next day I didn't, and I didn't hurt. I was like, I mean, it wasn't, that wasn't the orange juice cure, but I was like, mm. wow. So then I started experimenting so quick? with quick? Like you noticed a, a that difference quick. that quickly. How fascinating. That quickly. Yeah. Mm. And so it just set me on this path of well, what else can food do? And what else can I fix? And what else? Oh, you know, I wasn't cured overnight. I actually yeah. saw him as a, as a patient for about a year. But mm -hmm. as we went on, I needed him less and less. And I haven't mm -hmm. had any kind of physical therapy in almost 15 years, I'd say. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. And wow. I was on medication, too, for pain. I was on medication for migraines. I mean, I had it all. Migraines, mm. constipation, hormonal imbalance. So I'm meds for all of it. I didn't know that I didn't need the meds either. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gosh. It's just, I think once you know, you just think, oh my gosh, like it's just how, how it's so obvious when you know that you think, how do people not know? Especially the professionals. Of, <laughs> so how do they not know? How do they my head not in. know? Because we're not deficient in Imitrex. We're not deficient in whatever that it was, uh, Vioxx is what it was called. I was seeking for my knee. It was being called for heart, for causing heart attacks. Mm. And during this time when I started seeing neurologists for my chronic pain, um, so I'm going to take a turn on this story, but it's a, it's, um, a, a integral part. My father died and he was 50 years old Oh, and in perfect shape and in seemingly perfect health. But it turns out he had raging heart disease, like 90% blockages. And wow. it's a, it, it was sort of a perfect storm that happened that mm -hmm. day. And unfortunately, um, we learned a few years later, studies came out of how it could have been prevented because he, it was heat related, but mm -hmm. he, you know, he was, otherwise really fit but his diet wasn't and so what i what this eventually taught me was a genetic predisposition mm -hmm. is not your fate but you have to be mindful of it and do different things to get mm -hmm. a different result and so yeah. when i later had a cardio calcium scan everything was perfect i don't know what it was prior but you could presume if I were doing what he was doing, which was also fit and active and not, it's not like he was a junk food eater. He just wasn't a healthy eater. It was more mm. standard, standard American diet, which yeah. if you know, it, it's, it's pretty it's, much it's like a, this standard Australian diet is very is similar. It? Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's sad, yep. right? Sad it's and terrible. very sad. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot of meat and a lot of processed foods. And even though I wasn't eating meat anymore, I was still eating lots of processed food and lots mm -hmm. of sugar. And so during this time, people were like, well, maybe it's because your dad died. And so there's, there's that depression. And like, that's what the cause is. I'm like, no, because he, the day he died, he drove me to my neurologist. Like I was already doing that. It just didn't help because then it set me off on this path of, of depression and despair. And oh my God, my life is half over. I'm going to die too. And maybe what's wrong with me is warning signs we missed in him. And so it was this whole thing until mm. I finally had this, I don't know what divine intervention, 10 years is enough time of grieving and, and pain and, and searching to then figure out that, oh my God, there's, I actually have the power to change how my body responds, how my mm. body heals. Yeah. And the older I get, I don't feel worse. I actually feel if, 
if not better, the same. Like I'm, I'm, mm. I'm just, I'm just as act, more active than I was in my twenties. They told me I yeah. could never run again. I can run. I can do squats. I have a four year old. <laughs> So All right. Wow. I'm... Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's lots of bending, lifting. Well, yeah, less so by four, but to have got to a four-year-old, that's a lot of, that's yeah. a lot of legs and back. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's 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 the that's the that's a nutshell of the story. <laughs> yeah. I know. What I've discovered is, you know, for for myself, and really, I think for whenever I talk to anyone who, if anyone's had a chronic health story they're never short like they're never they're just not short stories it's usually it's years of suffering before you find something that works which is usually you know diet's usually a core part of it and you know you've been passed around to lots of different doctors so that's it's such a sad story but it's a very common story and so I think you know if you're listening and you're still in that hunting around you know phase you know start looking for your integrative doctors your functional nutritionists like you Ali your mm -hmm. you know your the people that are going to treat you like a whole body and not just a not just an endocrine system or a cardiovascular system or an orthopedic issue you know you need yeah, a torn meniscus yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right like why did you do that and you know and and probably if you're listening to the show you've got a thyroid problem so you know you do have extra challenges with um connective tissue and you know muscle strength and you know there's a whole lot of physic physiological consequences from being you know hypothyroid in particular so mm -hmm. um I mean, have you got thyroid issues Ali or you work with people that do or you know what's your connection in with the thyroid space yeah so yes I work with people with thyroid with usually hypo thyroid yeah. and Hashimoto's the most yep mm -hmm. um but what's so funny is most people who come to me for all of these other issues that kind of like I was describing, they don't mm -hmm. think either they already know they've been dealing with thyroid and they're coming for something else and don't realize that how connected it is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or they don't realize that thyroid has anything to do with it mm. because the doctor has dismissed them. I get that all the time. Well, no, this is, is normal or, you know, it's subclinical, but we don't need to do anything about it. And I'm like, wait, hey, we want it optimal. And yeah. I learned this the most myself. I never thought that I had a thyroid issue. And I don't think that I did until just a couple of years ago. <laughs> and, and it, you know, it, it, it speaks to stress and mm -hmm. how much stress affects our body, our chronic pain, chronic health issues, thyroid, mm -hmm. how much it impacts. And so I previously didn't have, with all my issues, and I had a lot, thyroid wasn't one of them, thankfully. Except that a couple of years ago, I, so I had, I had had a baby and I had a baby later in life. And, uh, cause I was busy fixing myself. <laughs> 20s, so I was six, 30s, yeah, yeah. yeah 30s, Those I was like fixing. on repair. Yeah. Went back to school. That was the other thing. So I completely changed my life after I was like, wait, what? And people, I moved to California and people were asking me about, you know, like, what, how come you have energy and how come you're not eating that? And I'm like, maybe I should be doing something else. And so I went back to uh -huh. school and so put that aside. And what I came to find is that I started, it was after. I had, I was actually, I was still nursing at the time, but my period had come back. I had two, it was pandemic. I had two cats who were getting, oh, they were essentially dying. They died during 2020, but they were my babies. And so they're getting sicker. I have a baby who's getting bigger and bigger. And what I noticed as that year went on that I started getting this belly fat and I was like, why? I'm not doing anything different. And people talk about like pandemic weight gain and that's not, that didn't apply. I didn't feel like that applied to me mm -hmm. and started doing testing. I'm like, come on, Allie, you know what to do. You do this with other people. And I looked and I was like, why is that say that? <laughs> that's not what uh -huh. I'm supposed to say. That's a little low. And mm -hmm. so, um, yes, a little bit low. And so I've been working on that and it, and it, yeah. when you support it, it responds. And mm -hmm. so that's really helpful, but I'm also making sure that it doesn't become, um, uh, an autoimmune attack because yeah. stress is yeah. one of the things that can be a, a trigger. 
You know, mm -hmm. you have to have the, what I call the trifecta, which is, you know, you have a genetic predisposition. I don't know if that's there. Yeah. But most people do. Like most people who already have the diagnosis and we go through their health history and they're like, oh yeah, my mother, my grandmother, or my so-and-so, even though they didn't have a yeah. diagnosis, it's usually there. You have to have some kind of dysbiosis in the gut. Mm -hmm. I had that. I definitely had that. It surprised me that I had that, but I did. Mm -hmm. Having a baby is a stressor. A pandemic mm -hmm. is a stressor. Your yeah, animals right. dying. Yeah. yeah. So many things. Right. And yeah. it impacts your gut in mm -hmm. ways that we don't necessarily see because it's at the microscopic level. We don't necessarily yeah. notice until it finally is like, oh, hey, belly fat. <laughs> mm, hey, fatigue. Yeah. What's up? Um, mm. And then the other thing would be some kind of insult, some kind of trauma is usually like the third thing. And so I would say that, that, um, uh, you know, death, pandemic, divorce, yeah, that's trauma. trauma yeah. Yeah, so many tra childhood trauma, yeah. you know. So, yes, yeah. I work with a lot of people with thyroid issues and we often are yeah. uncovering that because mm. it was dismissed by their physician and I have yeah. you know I've had to be the one to say uh because I'm not a doctor so I don't do the diagnosing but when I've asked to look at labs or I'll order labs and I'm like can, and I see antibodies like off the chart I'm like can you please go back to them and show them these numbers and I want them to say oh yeah Hashimoto's yeah. and they do and they're like I can't believe they told me that like I was fine and you know one I was working with a 25 year old whose doctor dismissed her <laughs> Hashimoto, I mean, off the charts, antibodies, and recommended she get a stomach surgery for her weight. 25 oh. years old. Wow. wow. She had severe hormonal imbalance and gut mm. dysbiosis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, and I know, like, and I, you know, this hasn't been my personal experience but I do know lots and like and I hear lots and lots of stories of people who really have been passed around gaslit by, you know, the medical profession. And, you know, I think even, I mean, even if you know you've got, you know, Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism or, and your medical, you know, doctors know that they don't always connect that with, say, the pain or the gut issues or the, you know, they might yeah. connect it with the weight gain or a bit of fatigue depression you know or yeah. even depression often people are just diagnosed with depression not <laughs> but it seems to me that they not looking I mean I just think thyroid health your thyroid function affects everything well it's every single cell in your body so to me that's like <laughs> yeah it's probably connected to your thyroid and maybe I over connect you know and again I'm not medical either so it's just in my own head I'm like yeah that's got to be connected that and the more I've looked at my own health over a long period of time you know, I look back and I think, oh, yeah, that's probably was more connected to my thyroid health than I thought it could have been. And so, you know, when we're thinking about, you know, I sort of wanted to you know, go back to the pain a little bit, like when we're talking yeah. about that, um, I mean, and, you know, you're working with lots of women with thyroid issues, you've had some, you know, and certainly dealt with chronic pain, like is, mm -hmm. is nutrition enough? Like, uh, and I think that is a big part of it, but are there other Maybe we talk about the nutrition first and then I'll ask, you know, are there other um, things that we, you know, that can, can help? So from a nutrition point of view, what, what have you found that helps your th thyroid patients with pain issues? Well, the best nutrition isn't going to do anything for you if you can't break down the nutrients and absorb uh -huh. them. And okay. so I see that a lot too, or somebody says like, you know, but look, I'm eating so healthy and I don't understand why I feel this way. Because I mm -hmm. say, well, there's probably an issue in what happens after you get it into your body. Yeah, There's a breakdown yeah. there as if it's not breaking down or it's not absorbing. So that's usually the, mm -hmm. the first place that we start. So yes, diet, obviously, nutrition, but making sure, you know, they say like you are what you can eat, but or you are what you eat and if you are what you can absorb. Mm -hmm. That's your, those are your nutrients. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Having well, for starters, whenever I know that somebody is low thyroid and we're working on the digestive piece, I like to recommend Brazil nuts. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, the therapeutic dose, two in the morning, two in the afternoon. And so that selenium is really, really helpful for um, thyroid health. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, so that's, that's definitely like a, a tool that we use. Because yeah. I don't like to go to supplements first, but mm-hmm. they're usually a part of it because, and I sort of mentioned it before, you want to go, if, if there's deficiency, you need to get from deficiency to sufficiency. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. supplements can help you get there. So like selenium, zinc, um, those are two big ones, I think, with yeah. thyroid. Um, your bees, yeah. obviously, because yeah. if you have stress and if you have poor digestion, you're going to be low in B vitamins um, and uh, iron. Yeah. And so that was something that was also new to me that I was like, why am I so low? Like that was surprising to me. Mm, but, you know, yeah. your body will show you and it's not necessarily what you expect. Like when you think digestion. I don't have constipation. I did then. I don't have constipation. I don't have bloating or diarrhea. So I don't have digestive issues. Mm. But you're low in thyroid. But you're low in these, the, you know, so yes, there is a, a, a digestive component that needs to be addressed. It just doesn't mm-hmm. always manifest as what we think of as traditional digestive. Yeah. Um, so bringing in whole foods, I mean, this, this sounds so obvious, but so many of us are not doing it because we're busy. And so we're going to the package and process, which in modern life, that's, I think it's always going to be a part of it unless you're completely self-sufficient, you know, you, you are a sustainable <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. farmer. Yeah, but, you're living um, off grid and you're <laughs> yeah. Yeah, growing your own veggies. Yep. But yeah, which is awesome. Uh, I'm not doing that here in the city, but you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, so some of it can be good. You have to know what to avoid and there's like mm-hmm. healthier versions, but getting in as much of the fresh foods, cruciferous vegetables, bringing that in because there's likely, you know, it's never just one thing. It's never just one thing that caused the problem and it's never just one issue to solve. And so there's probably, um, there's, there's a, a blood sugar imbalance which has then led to a whole cascade of other hormonal imbalances. And you're holding on mm-hmm. to all of these hormones. And so cruciferous vegetables are going to help you to detoxify excess hormones. So that's mm-hmm. really helpful um, when you have low thyroid. So thinking in terms of how can we optimize our gut? So we're protecting the thyroid with selenium and zinc and vitamin A is also really protective. And so that I probably, you could do vitamin A foods, but I, I would probably do a, a vitamin A supplement if we're trying not to go autoimmune. Um, mm-hmm. But then thinking in terms of how can I optimize my gut health, my uh, absorption. So, so having like lemon water or apple cider vinegar before, you know, on an empty stomach in the morning or before your meals really can help with that absorption. and. Um, Thinking in terms of liver support, because as you know, part of, you know, converting the whole conversion process, because there's never one reason why your thyroid is, is malfunctioning, right? Is it a, is it a low production or is it low conversion? If it's low conversion, mm-hmm. where's that happening? You need your liver, you need your kidneys. Yeah. So optimizing liver support. And so again, we're, we're talking cruciferous vegetables bitter herbs, a lot of greens, fat. I was low fat at the time. Low fat, no fat. That was the way for a while. It's the wrong back, way. Yeah. 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 Back a while ago. Yeah. Yes. Fat's back. Yeah. Fat is back, baby. And, and, and it's really good for you. It's really important for your, um, uh, for your liver health, for your, um, for, for bio, for bio production. I actually, there was a Canadian naturopath I was listening to on a podcast who said that most people with Hashimoto's, I forget what the, what the percentage was, have a, um, gallbladder dysfunction. They have low yeah. bile. Yeah. Okay. You know this. Yeah. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the percentage is either, but I did have, um, somebody on, um, uh, recently talking about gallbladder nutrition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yes. It's all connected. It's, it's all connected. connected. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the functional way. And that's, that's, mm. that's why I, um, you know, that, that is why I have the five pillars that I talk about. That's why when you're, when you have chronic illness, it's not just one thing that got you there and it's, you have several steps to complete. It's not just get rid of orange juice. Ah, you're cured. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit more to it than that. Yeah. Yeah. And look, and I think um, it's funny because when you said before, I, I think my regular listeners will be like, was that Annabelle or Ali that said it's never one thing that gets you here and it's never one thing that gets you out? It's pretty much like I would say that often. So, <laughs> so it's good. I like it when my guests say, you know, similar things to me. You yeah, know? I mean, I yeah, like it when yeah. people say different things too, but it's like, oh, sure. yeah, good. No, um, there's, the not, there's at least on the same page. And, you know, that's where I think, I mean, for me, diet made a massive difference, but it's not, again, it's not the whole picture. So, you know, mm-hmm. there there are other components. You talk about your five, you know, five pillars. Mm-hmm. What are your five pillars? I've got four. So, what are your five? I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're working. You're you're optimizing digestion, right? Yeah. And so, and blood sugar balancing. So it's a whole thing that you have to master that. And so it's a new way mm-hmm. of eating and getting in touch with your body and really understanding how food feels in your body. I was so disconnected from that because I was grieving, because I was busy. I just did not, I just felt tired. So I wasn't thinking about, oh, do I feel more tired when I have this? Do I crash when I have Mm. this? Do I bloat when I have this? And so learning how to eat properly and which can look different for everybody also. There's not one way. Mm. Mm, We're always looking for the diet that's gonna cure everything. And it's like, well, you don't have the same genetics. You don't have the same lifestyle. You might have the same diagnosis, but the route to resolution might look completely different for you mm-hmm. than for you than for you, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we, we want to have that blood sugar balance because if you don't, then you're likely not sleeping well. I wasn't sleeping well, right? And so I was exhausted. And when you're not sleeping, I mean, I was sleeping about four hours a night. I thought that was okay. Wow. Like, who had time much. for more? <laughs> no, yeah, wow. I mean, I can't even, like, if I get six, I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. Mm. And less than six, forget it. And I, you know, and I was young and I just thought, well, there wasn't time. And I just felt like I needed more time for me, which is very important. But there's a, there's, there's, you have to rearrange your life a little bit. Like, I was giving too much away to my work funny the show that I worked on was called one life to live and I used to joke like one life left one life to live and no life left to live for yourself (laughs) (laughs) yeah the the show took it away from all the yeah yeah, and I loved it and no you know no disrespect but I just I wasn't able at that time with everything that was going on for me and I didn't realize that I was doing things wrong there's a right way to do it But I also felt like when I came home, I needed to recapture my time. And so I would stay up and do watch TV, like, but it's my time. And like, you know, and I'd pass out on the couch with a pot of pasta. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, the pasta will make you a bit tired. Yeah, I'm not, that's, yeah. (laughs) So embarrassing. But yeah, Yeah. I used to do it. It was like a bachelor. Um, but the, the sleep part is so important because so much happens while we're sleeping, all of that repair, when you have pain, your body can't repair itself. If you're not sleeping, your liver Mm, can't detoxify. mm. If you're not sleeping, your mitochondria can't restore themselves. If you, if you are not sleeping and getting good quality sleep, not just, you know, take Mm. a sleeping pill, but really this whole hormonal imbalance, we have to embrace it and go with it that's just the circadian Mm. rhythms of life like there's there's it's kind of an awesome machine that we've been given and we abuse the hell out of it yeah yeah that's right so so is sleep that one of your pillars or is that is sleep one of them yeah Yeah. sleep for sure and then because if you're not sleeping and your blood sugar is imbalanced and you don't have good digestion Mm. you're not eliminating Mm. so Uh where's the poop because I know when you know using me as the example I didn't poop all that often I thought that was okay because I didn't have time oh, that's hilarious I didn't have time to poop any right <laughs> so it was fine. Hours. you don't want anybody <laughs> that's hilarious to know. right that's, that's pretty funny but here's the thing. 
<laughs> the digestion is working properly. It doesn't take very long. Yeah, that's so right. you can easily <laughs> yeah. be at work and go into the bathroom, be in and out in five minutes. It's not a big sink. It's not like a long time. You know, guys would go in with a newspaper and they're in there for half an hour. Like I didn't have half an hour. I also don't need to do that. <laughs> but <laughs> and you shouldn't need to do that. Mm, you should be able to yeah. just go. And it's so important yeah. because otherwise you're toxic. Everything is just built up mm. in your body. And yeah. um, so, so that's so super important for pain. All of that inflammation causes pain. It doesn't let your body repair. It just causes more and more inflammation. Um, so that's a really big thing that I think gets overlooked. Mm. People don't realize how important it is, the quality of your poop, the frequency of mm. your poop. You know, some people will say, oh, yeah, I poop. But, it, you know, it's always very small or, you know, they don't, they count it, but it's, it's, it's not good enough. It's not yeah. good quality. And uh, there'd be pretty few people, I would think, that would connect that in with pain. You know, so oh, that's yeah. a that's an interesting connection, isn't it? That's oh, just that yeah. whole, yeah. Well, yeah. My, it was a um, an acupuncturist I was working with who looked at my tongue, and mm -hmm. he said, "Oh, you're not eliminating." And I was like, "I didn't know what he meant." And he said, "Going to the bathroom," and I said, "Oh." No, I do. Like, I don't know, two, two to three days, every two to three days. And he's like, that's not good. And yeah. he said, you're stagnant. I was seeing him for chronic pain. <clears throat> and acupuncture mm. helped me a lot. It didn't solve everything, yeah. but it helped a lot. Mm. When you're stagnant, your chi, your energy needs to be flowing to repair. Your blood needs to be flowing to repair toxins need to flow out <laughs> we need to eliminate this yeah stuff. you don't want to be holding on to all this stuff no exactly no, no. Exactly. and a lot of us do for a lot of reasons mm. um mm. which brings me to so is that number five is what are the things that are you're putting in on and around you mm -hmm. so at the time i was i've always been a tree hugger i've always been that um like environmental activist Mm -hmm. And also, I didn't know that I was doing some things with good intentions, but they were actually detrimental to my hormones, to my right. thyroid, to my digestion, like taking my plastic Poland Springs water bottle and refilling it for like uh -huh. a week or two yeah. until it started to smell. Then I would, and I was like, well, I'm not using a lot of plastic. I'm just using one bottle. What? Yeah. And so I meant well. Yeah, I'm just drinking all the chemicals from the plastic. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All so day, now you've got what, one stainless steel bottle and you can just refill from that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Case <laughs> everywhere in point. I yeah. go. Everywhere yeah. I go. And I have a filter in it just in case because wherever I go, they might not necessarily have uh -huh. the water filter, you know, filtered water. So I have one in there. So oh, I'm always clever. taken care of. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, where are there toxins that you can get out of your life? So, I, I mean, I had them everywhere at that time. It, it, yep. Plug in air fresheners, candles, yep. body <laughs> sprays, the yep. makeup. Perfumes. You know, all yep. of it. Yep. Right? Yeah. They never done that. Yeah. Yep. Yes. yes. And so it just, all of that builds up. And it, it's your, your body burden just can't take it anymore. Yeah. And um, so when you look at chronic pain, and we've said it like a dozen times already, it's not just one thing. I did have an injury, but it was not consistent. And it was getting worse. An injury is supposed to heal. Mm. And I wasn't giving my body the tools it needed to heal, to repair. I wasn't giving it the rest. I wasn't giving it the nutrients that it needed. I wasn't detoxifying. Uh, I wasn't, I, I mean, I feel like that's it. And I was just in, inundating it with more and more and more yeah. and more. Sugar yeah. is super inflammatory. Gluten and dairy, super inflammatory. Huge part of my diet, right? Yeah. Then, I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, there's there's things that we're inadvertently, we don't realize because they're often billed as good for you and they can be fine for some people. 
But I feel mm. like if you have compromised digestion, if you have autoimmune, it's got to go. It's got to go. Yeah. Because you're pouring salt in the wound and yeah. we need to fix it. Um, so, yeah. yeah, it's not just, uh, you know, functional nutrition is about diet and lifestyle. And so mm. it is all of those things. Um, yeah. And mindset. Yeah. I don't think we touched upon that, but like, that's huge. And that was yeah. somehow I got in that mind of, I can do something. I didn't know what, but I just knew somehow in my gut that I was meant to do something more and my body was going to heal. And I didn't know how, but I, w I wanted to know. And, um, mm. work. Yeah. Here you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's, I mean, that's it, it. That's a really good picture of the holistic nature of healing, and yeah. and that those things for you, the same for me, have or differently, but you know, same sort of um, issues that we've worked through over time. Like it does, it yeah. takes time to identify all those things, to learn, to you know, to see what makes a difference. You know, I think there's a lot of people, and it, this was definitely my story before I changed my diet, was I didn't realize just how much of an impact food had on me. I just thought that I, I thought it was normal to feel bloated most times I ate. I just thought I was greedy. I thought, oh, uh, oh well, of course, anyway, you just ate too much. You like your food too much. You're just greedy and lazy, and that's why you're overweight. And that's why, you've, you know, you kind of look six months pregnant after you eat because you just ate too much. And then I cut out gluten, gluten, grains and dairy, sugar. And I was like, oh, oh, I can eat a big meal and not feel bloated. Huh. Amazing. I'm not just, well, maybe I could still be a bit greedy, but it's, you know, like, you know, <laughs> but I'm like, right, I can eat a big meal. I mean, obviously, you can, if you've overeaten, you've overeaten, but yeah, I could eat a big meal and not feel six months yeah. pregnant. You know, and yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. okay. I didn't know. I hadn't made that connection. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think there are so many people out there that don't know how good they can feel because they've mm. never actually felt great or not for such a long time that they actually don't. You, you get used to living this subpar life. That's you don't normal. know that. It's not like your chronic pain you know, for years, you know. It's like it's not normal to be carried up the stairs by a work colleague. That's not normal, like not for a young, healthy, you know, person in their 20s. Like that's No, we make normal. excuses for it. I mean, the excuse was, mm. oh, I can't take the taxi cab if I'm wearing heels because there's not enough room for my leg or I have to have the aisle. I'm not very tall. I have to always have the aisle seat because I have to be able to move my knee. And it's like. Uh, I'm just making excuses instead of fixing it. I'm making excuses why I can still eat and drink all of the things that I was mm. eating and drinking and not yeah. actually taking ownership of, I can actually help my body feel better so that people don't have to give me special chairs. And I had to have a foot rest because I couldn't feel my foot on the ground and, you mm. know, constantly going to therapies and all that, like how much time and money and oh yeah relationships that I lose over just being miserable and constantly having to do all of this stuff mm. to fix myself. And all I had to do was take some things out of my diet, add a whole bunch of things in. <laughs> yeah. And tell me, um, Ali, how did you find exercise in all of this? Because I think exercise and chronic pain is such a, you know, you know, you've got to exercise, but it hurt. Like, you know, what was, yeah. what's been your approach or what have you seen worked for clients or both, you know, because that's a, a I, I found that a tricky one. Like, a, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to push myself too much, but I know I've got to push myself. Like it's just like, you know, it's a tricky one to manage. I think it depends on the person. Like I was definitely a, I like physical activity. I, I'm, um, I just was always an active person. And so mm -hmm. not being able to work out because I couldn't bend my knees was a problem. Um, and so it depends, like some people are just not as, as excited about exercise. And so I say, like, let's find things that you are willing to do. Even a little walk, if that feels okay for you, just 10 minutes mm -hmm. in one direction, 10 minutes back. Or one thing that I'm using a lot with people is melt. 
it's myofascial it's a melt method it's a it's it's using yeah. rollers and balls and it, it it works with the tissues and it really helps with the healing to, um, promote mm -hmm. healing and so that is remarkable in getting your body to come back online yeah. um, melt as so, in m-e-l-t melt m-e-l-t yeah hmm. yeah okay, i haven't heard of yep. that i mean i've heard of like you know trigger point massage and stuff is it yeah. along those lines is it yeah. Uh, yes, but it's, it's, it's hmm. this one it's woman its created thing. this method. Yeah. 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 I'll have to look it so up. So that's hmm. super helpful. Yeah. M E L T method. Um, uh, but yoga, swimming, these are all things that can be really easy on joints and there's no, you're not in competition. And so you want to make sure that you're moving. Cause if you don't move it, you lose it. So you definitely, and especially for women, as we get older, like if we're not doing weight bearing activities, you really start to lose your bone mass and you don't want to do mm. that. So, so lifting even your body weight is helpful. So like squats, I mean, I can do squats. I do squats. I did them this morning, I do them every day, yeah. but I couldn't for a long time because I was going to break in half. I mean, crying, like crying. So mm. you don't realize how much you need your knees until you can't use them anymore. But another thing that I would recommend, so you got to have the diet piece, you got to be moving your body and um, is this is where supplements definitely come in. And I have a favorite. I love, uh, do you ever use SPM? Uh, I don't know. But not, okay. It doesn't ring a bell. Okay. Well, they're for anybody with chronic pain, I highly recommend yep. it's the bomb diggity specialized pro resolving mediators. And okay. I use them by Metagenics. There's other companies, Science for Health oh, yeah. has one. There's a few. But um, what it does, it resolves pain, right? So pain and inflammation is a normal part of our normal body function. Inflammation yeah, yeah. is not a bad thing, right? And so if you hurt yourself, you stub your toe, you're going to see that the, the redness, the pain, the swelling. That is your blood cells going and, and oh, there's a boo-boo. We're going to fix the boo-boo. And mom of a four-year-old, we fix the boo-boo. And what in a normal functioning body, it then resolves itself and you're better in a, like a day or two. But what happens on a microscopic level is these things persist. Inflammation persists. And when you don't see it anymore, that's the problem. That's the silent mm. inflammation. That is deadly. I mean, that's what kills people. That's what makes people suffer for so long because they can't figure out where it's coming from. This is why we start with the gut, where we can't see it anyway, but we know what we know, scientifically proven, that there are certain foods that cause inflammation. Yeah. So what SPMs do is instead of just resolving, stopping the inflammation, it actually brings the entire process because it's a two, it, it, resolving inflammation is a two-step process. And when you are stressed, when you are depleted, when you are aging and depleted and tired because of that, you stop producing these compounds and they've actually isolated SPMs in fish. So this is actually a, a very high quality fish oil. Uh, that you... I, yeah, I, my husband's had it. Yeah, because okay. I, I did think I wondered if, if I, when she said fish oil, I'm like, right, it's, yeah, it's your D8. GAs and you know well no it's i mean it's no it's, it's, it's no it's, it's not that it's a, okay it's called spm so it's a special yep. compound that's derived from fish so it is so it's not just a typical fish oil so you would yep, take your yep. other fish oil for that yeah I, I still but, think i'm pretty sure it's the same one he's taken so okay. yeah okay yeah yeah because yeah. it might have it in there too um hmm. but uh it really is amazing for pain okay. like, that was what i would take instead of like if I feel a migraine, which I don't, but if I felt like a head, like a sinus headache, um, I would take SPM. It, for anybody with joint mm. pain, SPM. If I tweak myself, because I, I am athletic and I do things, mm. you're more likely to tweak yourself. And I'm like, ooh, that's a, because, you know, I, there is damage. There was damage to my knees. I don't know what it looks like now because we stopped doing scans. But um, I never had surgery. So I don't, you know, sometimes hmm. there's probably a little arthritis maybe. But so sometimes there's like a little, but I'll just take SPM. But I keep it as like 
you know, it's my, it's my your, like your anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. what it is. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And so it's wonderful. And then of course mm. your herbs, love the yeah. herbs, right? Turmeric and, um, yeah. What else? Oh my gosh. Ginger. There's so many. Oh, oh ginger. 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 Yeah. Ginger's good ginger for pain. Is great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there are, um, there's one that I'm, it's escaping me, but, um, that's okay. Yeah. So there are things that can help with yeah. pain. And so yeah. I, you could take it prophylactically. I would actually do that. If you know mm. that you have pain and you're going into an athletic, you know, an exercise and you're like, oh, I'm a little nervous, go slow, take it easy. But also you can take mm. it beforehand so that your body is prepped. Yeah. And then yeah, take yeah it that's after. a good tip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's just that incremental. I mean, I think I worked out for me, I had back spasms a couple of years ago. I've had it twice actually over a couple of years, like almost, well, the first time I was hospitalized with back spasms and then the second time wow. uh, I wasn't, but it was about the same level of pain. And every time I moved, I was worried I was about to set off another spasm. And, um, and so I was very scared to get back into exercise and for, it probably took me a couple of years really to, especially after the first time I thought I have to, I, I can't not exercise because I'm worried about setting off another back spasm. So I just went so slow, yeah, you know, but gradually and still like, I'm still, I still can get a bit hesitant. I won't push, push. You know, I won't do anything too, too strong, but I think, okay, I've got to, I've got to have the confidence to just push that little bit incrementally, like those little, little bit, because like you said before, if you're not doing some weight bearing, you know, weight, 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 weight bearing exercise or some strength training, which is what I've been, you know, doing yeah. really yeah. slowly, you know, building up from like yeah. body weight to, you know, not heavy weights. But if I don't do that, then everything's going to fall apart even more. And I definitely know it's better. My, my different aching body parts are better when I am doing this strength training. So I've got to push 100%. through fear. And a lot of it's fear. Uh, for me, it's fear. Yeah. Am I going, because I don't want to end up in that extreme situation. I think, okay. And my chiropractor is like, well, you probably, you know, just go slow and you're probably not going to do that. <laughs> like, but you can't use your fear as an excuse to not do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Start with no weights. And then when you're like, this is too easy, I feel good. Slowly increment up. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go and, and do what is it? CrossFit? Like you're not going to go and do yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't have to join some bodybuilding competition or, no. you know, yeah, or CrossFit or anything like no. that. No, no. Oh, and dear. in fact, the, the, the slower you move, the harder it is on your muscles. And that's what you want to fatigue, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you, you don't want, you don't want to be stressing your, your lower back. You don't want to be stressing your joints. If you're, if, you know, if your form is right, um, and you're moving really slowly, that's hard. Even without a weight, that's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, lo a low, slow, like a slow squat. Yeah. That's a killer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is. Yeah. Without any weight. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or do it on a wall, right? Mm. If you're worried about your back, do it against the wall or even just mm. sitting in like a chair position against the wall. Yeah. Do that for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah Sweating. that's true oh yeah <laughs> that just takes Holding me back to uh, I don't know group fitness classes or something <laughs> um, so Ali is there anything I haven't asked you that you think you know um the audience needs to know like you know any sort of I just that kind of, yeah I mean I, th I kind of think we, we we talked about everything um and you you kind of you said it and it's really really important that there are thyroid receptors in every cell of the body and mm -hmm. so not to dismiss that when you have a whole long list of symptoms that sound like it's not related to thyroid or that your thyroid couldn't possibly impact it because it's digestion or it's or it's headache or it's anxiety or it's it's mood or it's fertility and you think like well no it's not related it is it mm. it it just it gets impacted and yeah. so um you know and that's that's why I you know, have the roadmap for chronic illness because it's touching upon all of these things and thyroid mm. is included in that. It's just, it's just, it's all connected and everything matters and you're all unique. So again, if there's not, you can have the same diagnosis, but you, 
your way of getting to your resolution might look a little bit differently, but you're still addressing all of the same areas. Yeah. 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 Great. And is that the roadmap? <laughs> Tell me, is that what the way you work? Tell us how you work with clients. If people wanted to connect with you, what do you, how do you work with people? How, how do you, would you like people to connect with you? Tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the roadmap for, uh, for, for resolving chronic illness, for recovering from chronic mm -hmm. illness uh, is a free gift that I have for your audience. And um, I work with people one-on-one -on -one and in groups and I'm, I'm constantly sharing tips and recipes and, and brands that I found and love um, on Instagram. And, uh, you know, I, I really like diving in with the people who have been dismissed or have been mm. just on this yo-yoing, ping-ponging between practitioners, between you know, not having answers and like, let's lay it out really simply yeah. and peel back the layers of the onion and, and get you on the, on the road to healing. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I will make sure I put all your connect, you know, all your places to connect in the, in the description below, wherever you're listening. Um, so check that out. And I will be sharing some snippets from this um, conversation on social media once the, the episode comes out as well. So uh, I want to say, but yeah, a big thank you, Ali, for, you know, for being here, for sharing your story and, you know, um, your expertise with the Let's Talk Thyroid community. Um, really, really have appreciated your energy and your enthusiasm mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah, your, your um just willingness to be real, I think, you know, and share your own story. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's really fun being here with you and another like-minded person. And I love it. I love the work yeah, that you're great. doing. Really important. Thank So this is your Kiss Thyroid coaching segment at the end as a bit of a recap um, and just to help direct some of your thoughts perhaps as to what to do with the information that you have just heard. Um, I don't know. I learned a few things. Um, I didn't, uh, I'd never heard of the melt method. That's what I'm going to go investigate. Um, I've always got sore parts of my body um, still, despite having done a lot of the things that we talked about in the podcast. Uh, so I'm, I'm always curious for new things. So that's what I'm going to go and investigate. Um, I'm also I'm going to look into that SPM because I actually um, after I finished recording, I went and found the bottle of SPM. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll show. Um, it's a Metagenics. Um, Lee has been taking this actually, not for chronic pain, um, but, you know, for um, other reasons. And so hmm, um, I also found that some of the ingredients are in this, the Amigas um, from doTERRA. So that's, I'm going to do a bit more digging into whether they're kind of the same thing or not um or complimentary or do i need you know what i benefit from both it's probably a conversation i'll have with um, my doctor next doctor's appointment which is in about a month um so these are the sorts of things like i'm always learning new things so what did you learn from this episode is there something you want to take away and investigate further um is there you know is it time to finally you know make those dietary changes the um, I know we didn't go into a lot, but, you know, the sugar, obviously sugar is so inflammatory. Um, sugar, gluten and dairy, I think, were the main things that she talked about. But, yeah, is there some dietary change? Is there managing stress? Is it just finally connecting the dots? Did this help to connect some dots for you in your own thyroid journey, say, between some of your symptoms and your thyroid health? Perhaps um, you've been told by doctors over the years that your depression or your constipation or you know um, something like that isn't connected to your thyroid health well perhaps it is and so you know I think there's some value just in being able to make those connections so anyway whatever it is do stop and think about what you've just heard um, if there's something you need to take action on write it down send yourself an email that's what I always do when I need to um, take action on something I send myself an email um, even if it just sits in the email for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months I won't delete it until I've done it um, so that's a good strategy for me uh, jot something down in your diary make a phone call do some googling whatever you need to do um, yeah hope you do it and I hope it helps you to get out of chronic pain 
Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Let's Talk Thyroid. If you have enjoyed the content or perhaps you're thinking, oh, my mum needs to hear this or my sister or my bestie, I would love it if you would share this episode with them. That really just helps spread the positive and practical message of Let's Talk Thyroid and helps um, that broader thyroid community, our friends and family to live well with their thyroid health. So you can just yeah share the episode. If you subscribe uh, on whatever platform you're listening to, uh, to this podcast, it's free. Uh, it's really helpful because then you'll be notified every time a new podcast comes out and it just makes it much easier to find. There's usually a little subscribe button or a bell or um, a follow often is the terminology. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, that would be helpful. Of course, if you want to leave a review, even better, just a sentence or two about how the podcast has helped you. You can definitely connect with me via letstalkthyroid.com. That's where you'll find access to my book, my coaching, uh, my freebies, and really everything that I offer in terms of thyroid support. 